Hi, Story Hour friends. We have another scientific book for you today. But before we start, I should tell you that this scientist does not like peas. I love to eat peas, but that's a problem for her and she has found a solution. We'll see if you like what she does. It's called The Princess and the Petri Dish by Sue Flayus. The Princess and the Petri Dish. In a kingdom long ago, there lived a girl with dreams. A princess and her petri dish took science to extremes. Princess Pippa questioned things. She followed her own path. While other girls were curtsying, she brushed up on her math. Her parents built a lab for her and filled it with supplies. She wanted to make something great or maybe win a prize. Yet Pippa's lab experiments were never a success. Her hand soap turned your fingers blue. Her slime balls made a mess. Her bubble gum was brittle. Her fizzy soda, flat. Her mouthwash made your breath smell bad. And no one wanted that. One evening during dinner time, the queen said, eat your peas. But Pippa thought they tasted dull. Can I just skip them, please? When Pippa scooped them with her fork and Mother looked away, she slipped them in her pocket. No, I won't eat peas today. And that's when Pippa hatched a plan. I'll grow a better pea with flavor so delicious all the people will agree. She grabbed a brand new petri dish and started right away. She lined the dish with paper towels and set it on a tray. She took a pea and cocoa bean, extracting cells with care, then joined the two together. They'll make the sweetest pear. She watched and watered every day, and soon it grew a root. Then Pip saw, to her delight, it sprouted up a shoot. Soon the pea outgrew the dish. She moved it to a pot, and when its size exceeded that, she found a garden plot. She opened up a pod with hope. It's time to check and see. She popped one in her mouth and said, the world's first chocolate pea. The peas became an instant hit with kids and parents too. The candy maker tried her peas and gave a rave review. The kingdom could not get enough of Pippa's chocolate peas. They sprinkled them on everything from pancakes to grilled cheese and fish and hot dogs, yummy. Tending to her plants one day, she noticed something wrong. These plants have grown too fast, she said. These vines are way too long. She had to harvest constantly. She gardened day and night. Poor Pippa hadn't slept in days and soon she lost the fight. Maybe just one nap, she yawned. She slept a week instead. Dreams of twisting, twirling vines swirled around her head. When Pippa woke to her surprise, the plants were 10 feet tall. They covered half the countryside. They would breached the garden wall. Pippa looked around her lab and swiveled in her chair. She checked her past experiments. The answer is here somewhere. Princess Pippa worked all night to make the perfect mix, and seeing the result, she said, I think I found a fix. She spritzed the vines around her with the mixture she'd created, then hoped her math was accurate and held her breath and waited. Soon the vines began to shrink. It's working, Pippa cried. The plants are back to normal now. The peas are safe inside. The princess gave instructions to the people of the town. They showered pea vines left and right and shrunk those pea plants down. When the last plant had been tamed, the kingdom breathed a sigh. Pippa's our best scientist, a fact we can't deny. The princess and her petri dish had proven dreams come true. Then Princess Pippa shouted, let's discover something new. Wasn't that a silly book, friends? I do like peas, but I might try a chocolate pea. I don't think I'd put it on my hot dog though. Remember, our secret code word this week is AHA. I'll see you next time, friends.